joining us now to continue our conversation on this huge story is criminal defense attorney Jeffrey Nathan, Skyping into us from Boston. And Jeff, it's great to talk to you. Thank you. All right, so the shooter is dead, and some folks might be wondering why do police need to figure out what took place in those two hours leading up to the killing? Because it's hard to fathom uh, that this individual was able to carry out these horrific acts as a sole actor, and consequently, the investigation is going to surround who helped him, who else participated, and whether or not there was any terrorism involved uh, that propped up his ability to execute these two of New York's finest. Now, as a criminal defense attorney, I'm sure you see this a lot in your work, but in this case, which we should clarify, you're not involved with, but in this case, how do you see those social media posts playing a role in the investigation, and how will cops look at those in the future from other folks through this prism? Well, police do use social media uh, and rely upon it heavily uh, when they're backtracking and looking to create uh, a motive uh, for a crime and or to rule out other actors. And as a consequence, uh, the postings are huge in this particular matter. Now, we've also seen uh, some of this video uh, of folks in the street chanting that they want to see cops dead. Uh, and also police found footage on Brindley, Brinsley's phone of a protest that he watched. There has been some discussion, too, about Michael Brown's stepfather, who said, burn uh, the blank down, talking about Ferguson after this. How much, uh, how much legal trouble could these folks be in when they're out there on the street ch chanting what some folks might consider incendiary threats? Well, it, I mean, individuals could be looked at uh, for uh, the charge of incitement to riot, and your First Amendment right to freedom of expression uh, does not include, for example, the right to say that there's a fire in a movie cinema causing a stampede when there's no fire. Uh, so constitutionally, it's, uh, these uh, protesters are really walking a very thin line, in my humble opinion. And, and what, would, what would it take to actually you know, have a charge filed here against anybody. These folks are recorded on videotape shouting these things. You would think that might be enough to a lay person like myself to actually bring charges against somebody for, now that we've had these types of assassinations. Yeah, but, you know, conversely, uh, look, this is the United States, and we have the right to express ourselves. Uh, this isn't... Uh, right, and uh, you can burn a flag, but saying you want to see cops dead, I think a lot of folks would argue that... Protected. Uh, it is heinousness of uh, epic proportions to even think about, let alone to say in public, but uh, we're a free society, sir. I agree with you 100 percent there, but you know, as you mentioned, there's a thin line here sometimes that these protesters are trying to walk. Where, where does that break down, in your opinion? It breaks down as to when you as a protester are causing irreversible harm to the general public. And in that instance, if that happens and there's material harm as a result of these protests, then I think some prosecutors are going to have to look in to say, look, who's organizing these protests? What are their real, what's their real intention? And are they uh, fostering uh, for good or is it evil? And if they dis to discern that they have evil intent, uh, then there's a possibility of some charges being brought down in regards to this matter. Yeah. But these protests and causing trouble when they really don't have any interest other than just simply causing trouble. Uh, Jeffrey Nathan, we're going to continue our conversation because we've got a couple other things to talk about, namely uh, the Bo Bergdahl investigation right now. Bo Bergdahl under the microscope of the U.S. military. Jeffrey Nathan Skyping into us uh, from Boston. He's going to stick around. We appreciate you sticking around. We know everybody's home for Christmas now. Great time to watch Newsmax TV. We've got a lot more to come here on the show. Jeffrey Nathan coming back. We're going to talk about Bo Bergdahl right after this short commercial break.